Hey, it's Garrett. It's almost midnight. I just got off work a few hours ago. And something absolutely amazing happened today. It was very diabolical. It was very dark. And it was very sinister. And it was also very amazing too. Very supernatural. Let me tell you what happened when I was working today. I was at work. I was actually working. And I was in my car going down the road. I was right by the strip in Las Vegas, the Las, Las Vegas Boulevard. We call that the strip, the most famous boulevard in the entire world. And I'm going down the street in my car. And I looked over to the left while I'm driving. I'm actually moving in my car. I look to the left and I see this beautiful young woman walking in the middle of the street. I'm sorry, um, I had tears in my eyes. Um, but um, she was walking in the middle of the street. And she had on a beautiful blue dress. She was young, very pretty, long brown hair, walking in the middle of the street. And she was barefoot. And her feet were all messed up. You see, it's still summertime. Um, it is a lot cooler now. It's only about... Um, like 90 to 95 degrees every day now, but it's still summertime. And she had been walking barefoot for a long time, I guess. <clears throat> but I was going the opposite direction and I was working. Then I get a call from a customer. So I go down a half a mile, make a U-turn, come back on the other side of the road, because I have a customer now that I gotta go get. And I'm coming back, and I'm not thinking of this young lady. I'm not thinking about her at all. I wasn't thinking about her. I thought it was shocking to see her walking in the middle of the road, but I'm working. I, I mean, I, I was focusing on work. Now, now what God does is, <clears throat> He gives me another customer. I got to make a U-turn and come back the other way. And now I'm going to go get my customer and she's still walking down the middle of the road barefoot. And one of the reasons I noticed her is her, she had on a really tight blue dress and it was beautiful like a just a beautiful blue and she's a young woman and she's also very pretty to begin with so I'm going I'm, I'm coming back down the road and I'm driving down to go get my customer and she's in the middle middle of the road walking barefoot her feet are all messed up and I zoomed past her because I'm focusing on work now, I knew something was very, very wrong with her, but I mean, I, I'm not doing ministry work today, today, Monday. No, no, Monday's a day I work. I, I'm in work mode. And I pass her, and I'm going kind of fast because I'm going to pick up my customer. And like God said, like, pull over. And I... I roll down my window, I pull over, and I did something that you should never do in Las Vegas to a beautiful young girl. I said, do you need a ride? Because I knew something was very wrong. And she kind of shook her head, yes, but like, not really a yes, but like she kind of shook her head, like I don't know what's going on. I pull over, I'm parked illegally, I'm blocking the whole road. I'm blocking the entire lane. And I pulled over 
Thank God there were no cars coming. And if the police saw me putting her in my car, I don't know what the police would think. If there were people behind me in their cars, they would think I'm picking up a demented hooker. That's what, they, that's what you think in Las Vegas. You don't just pick up young girls on the side of the road. That's very dangerous. <clears throat> and I don't know if she needs a ride or not. I don't know what's going on. So I want her to go in the back seat. I don't want her sitting next to me, but she comes in the car, sits in the front seat right next to me. And I said, what's wrong? What's going on? I see you don't have any shoes. She said, I got to get to Mandalay Bay Hotel. And I didn't know what to do. I had a customer that was expecting me to go pick him up. I didn't know what to do. I had two seconds to decide what to do here. I had two seconds. And no, I can't go pick up my customer with a barefooted, young, demented girl on the front seat of my car. That would have been quite a scenario if I did that. <clears throat> I've got two seconds to decide what to do. Oh boy. So I went in my cell phone and I canceled my customer. And she was watching me. She was wondering what I was doing. So I said, I, I had to cancel my customer. I'm going to get in a lot of trouble and I'm doing this for you. And my heart started beating now, I didn't know at the time what was happening, but my heart was beating because I was getting thoughts, wow, maybe this is a woman that God's bringing to you to get to know, to, to put into your life, to marry. Now, you're probably thinking, Garrett, that's really stupid. Well, I'm trying to tell you what thoughts were coming in my mind. I'm getting attacked, and I didn't know it. I didn't catch it yet. <laughs> And I said, are you a tourist? And she didn't really, she kind of babbled. And I said, do you live here? And she didn't really answer me. She said some weird sentence. And I'm looking at her face trying to figure out, okay, what's going on here? And she starts freaking out. And I said, relax, relax. We're going to Mandalay Bay. And we were on top of a road that was up high. And you could actually see Mandalay Bay Hotel over to the right. So I'm like lowering my voice. I, I don't know what's wrong with her. I, I, I don't know what's wrong yet. And I like lowering my voice. And I said, hey, hey, everything's okay. Everything is okay. Mandalay Bay is right there. Look. And she looked over there. <laughs> Okay. So I said, I'm going to take you there safely. Everything's okay. But I want to know, can we use my phone? And can we call your mom and dad so I can take you home? And she said, no. And I said, are your mom and dad here? And she was talking some weird sentences. Weird sentences that were not making sense. And I said, okay, okay, do you have a boyfriend here? Can I take you to his house? And I'm getting attacked with thoughts like, I want to marry her. And these are thoughts that are coming into my mind and in my heart, and my heart's beating fast. And I didn't know I was under attack at the time. This is all happening like in a few seconds. <laughs> and I'm Henny... So I had to cancel my customer. I'm trying not to think about that. I'm trying not to think about getting in trouble with work. I'm trying not to think about anything bad. And I, and, and I said, well, I said, how come you're barefoot? And she started babbling out some sentences about her boyfriend and they took her purse and her money and her shoes and her socks and her identification and her purse. But she wasn't speaking in proper sentences. She was speaking like a demented person. 
And I said, hey, hey, here's a bottle of water, because she had been walking a long time, barefooted, on the concrete street. And she grabbed the water and started drinking it, and then she would scream out, shut up, shut up. God is about to talk to you. Now shut up and listen. This is God talking. And then I finally put two and two together and realized that she might be partially possessed or more so. And it was a little scary. This is the first time this has happened in my car. I've seen this stuff on TV. I've seen this stuff in movies. I've read about this in books, but this is the first time it's happening in my car. And she starts bab, and, and this demon starts speaking in her. Her name is Shannon, if you want to pray for her. And this demon starts speaking out of her mouth, and this demon takes her over. And this demon is saying all kinds of different sentences. Then Shannon, the young lady, will come back for 30 seconds and say a couple things. And then I would say a couple things. Then the demon would take over again. And she would change and switch. And it was babbling all these demented sentences in the car. Now I start getting thoughts in my mind that she is going to take her fingers and her fingernails and attack my face. And those are the thoughts that were coming to me for the next two minutes. Um, I wasn't scared, but I was a, a little, little bit on guard and my cell phone was in the cell phone holder in the middle of the car and I had to keep my hand on that so she didn't steal it. And I said, is there anywhere I can take you? She said, I got to go to Mandalay Bay. And the demon is screaming out all kinds of crazy stuff. And I said, listen, can we go to the store and get you some socks and get you some brand new shoes? And she said, no. And, and the demon would say this sentence or that sentence and this sentence. And now we're halfway to Mandalay Bay now, and I said, we can get you some socks and some shoes. And I, you know, I said, and I said, look, um, is your name Shannon? Because the demon was talking in third person about Shannon, whom he was possessing. And I said, okay, I, I guess your name is Shannon, right? And, and um, I, I said, um, I said, look, could we pray? And she kind of said, oh, yeah, yeah. okay. And I, I said, okay, li listen, we're, going, we're almost at Mandalay Bay. It's just straight ahead, about one mile. Can we pray in the car? Then the demon took over again and started screaming, shut up. This is God speaking. How dare you interfere? Or like, how dare you try to whatever, whatever, whatever. And I was feeling really bad. And I was feeling really sad. And I don't know what happened to her. And I don't know how this happened to her. And the demon was saying all these different kinds of weird sentences. Then Shannon would take over for about 10 seconds. Then the demon would come back for a minute and babble and talk and, and scream and talk. Then Shannon would come back for five seconds and talk. And so I realized there's nothing I can do here. She's a young girl. She's halfway naked. She has no socks, no shoes, and her dress is really tight. She's very pretty. And I realized this is dangerous for me. And I got to get her to Mandalay Bay. And I took her to the front door where there's lots of witnesses, lots of people, valet, guys, security. And uh, I took her to the front door on purpose. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. And I'm really hurt right now. And 
upset and I'm in shock. I didn't know the Holy Spirit was just going to do this to me. Uh, out of nowhere while I'm working, I, I just, um, anyway, um, and she was like screaming, I got to get to Mandalay Bay. And I said, well, how about your mom and your dad? Can, can, can we take you there? And, and no, no, just no, no. The demon's talking these weird sentences about God, about Satan, about Hillary Clinton, all kinds of weird sentences. And <clears throat> then we got in front of Mandalay Bay and I, I um, opened up the door for her. And I told her in a really, really nice and loving voice, I said, and, and I looked right at her face, and she looked right at my face, and I said, um, I care about you. I care about you. And God allowed her to have her mind back for 10 seconds. So Shannon came back. The demon you know, went down, Shannon came back, and Shannon said, thank you, I'm going to remember you. And I just want God to know right now that I'm going to remember her. And I want to pray for her at least for a few days. I have been praying for her today. If you would like to pray for her, that's wonderful. And to show God that you care, to show God that you care about people, that you love people, that you have compassion. And that's basically the end of the story. I, I had to go back to work, and um, I don't think I got into trouble. I, I don't think I did, but I got to wait a day or two, let a couple days pass by. But I think I'm okay. And I feel really sorry for her. She was completely diabolically demented. And I hope no men grabbed her at the hotel with her being half naked with no shoes. And you know how those rich men are in Vegas. Those, And I, um, so um, I, I've been praying for her today. And I just... Um, I hate it here. I hate it. I hate what's going on here on earth. I hate what God is doing in many parts of the world. I hate the evil spirits. I hate the flesh. I hate people hurting people. I don't know what happened to her, but something with a man or man happened because the demon was talking in third person about Shannon and he was telling what was happening and I was getting this information and I just, I want to get to heaven. I just hate it here. There's just so much pain here, so much hurting, so much crying, so much devastation that people are going through. Okay, praise God.